I'd like to introduce myself a little bit, uh, since I don't know many of you. Um, I'm Japanese. I was born in Tokyo, and I grew up in New York City, and now I live in Los Angeles. Um, <laughs> um, ever since I was a child, I wanted to be an artist. For some reason, I knew I was going to be an artist. And I, had a, I went to Parsons School of Design in New York City, and I had a very good start. Uh, I started to sell my art and, uh, right after school, and I had a very successful artist, artistic life. Um, I was making lots of money in my 20s, but I was not happy at all. I was not happy at all. And, but I didn't know what to do because I wanted to be an artist and I was a successful artist, but then I wasn't happy. So I'm like, okay, what, what am I supposed to do? I didn't have the answer. And one night in 1993, <laughs> I, thank you for coming. In 1993, one night, I had this dream when I was sleeping, and I heard this voice. It was a commanding voice. Um, it said, you must help Tibet. And to be honest with you, I didn't know where Tibet was. I didn't even know where the Dalai Lama, uh, who the Dalai Lama was. And I said, Tibet? So at that time, we had very limited access to internet at home. So I had to go to the New York li library, public library on 42nd Street. I spent the entire day there researching on Tibet. And then that was the first time I learned about the history of Tibet, tragic of, of tragedy of Tibet. But then I said, what can I do? I'm just an artist. I'm not a movie star. I'm not a millionaire. What can I do for Tibet? And then start, strange things start to happen. I started to meet Tibetans I had never met before. I already lived in New York for more than 20 years. So it was weird, but it was beautifully strange. Um, and one person led to another, and my doors opened to, um, to get involved with the Tibet cause. I produce children's books for Tibetan refugee children. I print them in Tibetan, English, and sometimes Japanese, and I, just, uh, I donate them to all the Tibetan refugee children in exile. And uh, I've made seven books, and currently I'm making uh, a new book, a visual book on His Holiness the Dalai Lama's life story, which was requested upon by his uh, representatives. It will come out next year. And uh, how I work as an artist is a bit strange, I have to say. I paint my dreams. But these are dreams that I, I see during my sleep. It's not like the dream I have for, for future. So every night I, I dream something and I see my finished paintings in my dreams before I paint them. So for example, I go to a beautiful place and I see a nice landscape. That's not what I see in my dream. I finish my own paintings in my dreams. It's really strange, but um, somebody is painting for me. <laughs> and um, so what I do is I remember those visions and I just paint them. So many times people say, why did you do this or why did you do that? I always say I don't know because my job is to manifest the vision I see in my dreams. Those dreams have a lot of messages. I don't know where they come from. But I always see myself as a tool to convey the messages that I receive from somewhere. I deal with different levels of consciousness, but I don't want to uh, think too much about it. 
like, where do they come from? What do they mean? Because I'll never know the answer. Art is really personal and it's up to the viewers. Um, I never present my art saying, oh, this should be this, this should be this, no. My art, the paintings I paint, they don't belong to me. They come from somewhere else and I'm just a tool to convey the messages. So it's really up to the viewers how to interpret, uh, interpret my art. And this uh, Book of Buddha was made um, by me and Andrea Miller. She's the deputy editor of Lion's Roar magazine. Uh, she's a wonderful uh, person and I loved how she condensed the essence of Buddha's message into only a few sentences. There are only nine pages in the book. It's meant to be children, but for me it's for grown-ups because they're just so beautiful. It's not a typical children's book with cartoons and sweet talks. It's very profound and I'm very honored to present this book. Um, my family was not Buddhist. I mean, my parents were not Buddhist. My, I was born into a Buddhist family, but my parents were agnostic. So I did not grow up with any particular religion. But when I encountered Buddhism in New York, um, it really changed my life. I see it as as a way of life, not particularly religion, but a wonderful philosophy. And it really helped me and changed me. Uh, especially, I worry a lot. So, you know, if worrying helps, you know, oh, if, if there's no solution in worrying, what's the point of worry, as Shantideva said. So, um, Buddhism really changed my life and I'm very honored to share this book with you today. Um, I'll take some questions if you have about books or arts or anything. Yes. It's coming out next year? That's next, uh, it'll come out in fall next year. Fall next year. Yes. Yes. So that's your next project? Yes, I hope to present it here okay. again, okay. <laughs> if it's possible. And this book that you are launching today, The Day the Buddha Woke Up. Oh, they're all here. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Is, uh, does it come in any other language besides no, English? No, no, okay. I would love to. Okay. And that's up to the wisdom publish, publication. And uh, we have to decide. And, and uh, but. Uh, at the book launch in Amsterdam, they all said they want it in their language also, mm -hmm. also in German, French, it's, it's beautiful. So I hope to have different languages all, mm -hmm. as well. But uh, even in English, they're so simple. Okay. Yes, anyone can enjoy it. Yes, this was uh, actually Andrea's idea. She just had the second baby and then she wanted to make a board book. I don't have children. I didn't know what board book was. <laughs> I said, what is a board book? So she explained, this is actually the first board book on Buddha's life ever in the history. <laughs> so it's a very important book. Uh, I like the square format. It's very strong. It's meant for uh, babies, I think. But I think it's a great idea. Um, again, it's meant for young children, but if you read, you understand what I mean. It's really like a poetry book for any, any age. And, and the, the essence of, of Buddha's teaching is all in this one book. It's incredible, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the day the Buddha woke up. So, as you all know, probably, uh, Buddha means awakened one, yes? Um, 
but most people in the world don't know that. So I think we wanted to play with that idea. The day the Buddha woke up, so is it really literally waking up in the morning or consciously reaching the enlightenment? So, you know, we played with that and I think it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful title. It, it says a lot. What do you think? Yes, um, I've always wanted to make a book on, on Buddha, Buddha's life, and uh, well, Andrea wrote the text, and she said, will you do the arts, and, and of course I said, and um, I think if the bottom line is compassion, I think we need compassion the most in today's world. And this book really talks about that. But, but instead of saying, oh, you have to be compassionate, of course. Mm -hmm. And I really, as a, as a Buddhist myself, I really hope that um, Buddha's message um, will reach out to more people, not as a religion, but as a philosophy, and uh, again, as a way of life, because it transcends any religions, right? So this book is really the essence of, again, really, really condensed message, messages of Buddha. But to me, it's at the end of the day, what you want is a compassion. So this was, uh, of course, I had to get images for the book mm. in each scene. So Andre knows how I work, and Wisdom did too, so they never told me what to do. <laughs> the best way to work with Rima is leave her alone. <laughs> so what I do, when I have an assignment, what I do is I read the text, I meditate on it, and I just wait for the visions to come. Sometimes they don't come for many days, and I'm like, okay, I need to sleep more. <laughs> but um, I have a full trust in my process because I've been doing this for over 25 years. It never fails me, never. It, it never failed me. So I have a full faith in, in what I do. Again, because what I do is not, I have to be careful how to say this. Of course I do it for myself, but the purpose of what I do is not for myself. Sure. I have a responsibility to convey the message. So I focus on that and I'm always supported by something bigger than me. So what I did for this was I read the text, I meditated and I waited for quite a, quite a, a while and finally I get all these visions in my dreams. And I don't do sketches. Many artists do a lot of thumbnails and sketches, and, and um, sometimes people I work with, can we see your sketches? I said, no. They said, why? And I said, I don't have them. I don't do sketches. It's all in here. So I just take the piece of paper and then I start uh, painting and drawing. And I work on the black surface. Uh, many artists work on white surface but what I do is I do a reverse technique for example you see the black line these these lines are uh, actually the paper so what I do is uh, I lay I lay colors on the black surface and leave the lines so the lines uh, the surface of the color becomes the lines do you understand the reason is uh, when I was young I was doing lots of line drawings and I became really good at it because I was always doing it. And it, everything I did looked perfect and so boring. Uh, I'm Japanese, you know, so I find beauty in imperfection. It's a very Japanese aesthetics. It's called wabi-sabi. So, 
you know, the world uh, demands beauty and perfection, right? But my culture find anything beautiful. And we manage to do that if a cup is broken, we don't throw it out like most people in America. <laughs> we fix with gold, we, we call it kintsugi, and we treasure it. We use it for another 10, 20 years. That's the culture I'm from, and I'm very proud of it. So I said to myself, how can I create images without making perfect lines? So I thought, I, you know, it's nothing new. I didn't invent this method. Um, many people do, I'm sure. But I started to do this method. So somehow lines are not perfect and create this warmth. And uh, I really like this style, so I've kept this style and it has become my signature style. I went all I, I went off you. from your question, you sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I see my finished paintings in my dream. So what I do is just uh, paint that. Yes, but uh, I go through phases of slumps. I mean, I, I go through phases uh, that I don't have any visions. And it's very painful. Like an athlete or, or anybody, if you're human, you go through phases. I go through phases with uh, I'm not inspired at all. And it's very painful because my galleries demand certain numbers of paintings by such and such, and I don't have any visions. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what to paint. Uh, those times are very challenging, but these are the times you really have to meditate and trust the, the path, and you have to really trust that they do come to you and not worry, which is very hard. But uh, again, I've been doing this for many years, and, and I've survived. <laughs> they always come. So at the end of the day, it's really the faith you have in your path. Thank you. It was a wonderful question. I hope so. <laughs> if not, they're, they're available on Amazon. Uh, some are sold out. Uh, I think we still have Save the Himalayas, which is a, an, a beautiful book uh, on environment. Uh, it's a story uh, about uh, snow lion, uh, snow leopard, which is the one of the in endangered species in the Himalayas. So that's available. Watkins has um, those books today also. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I, th I believe others are sold out. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. Possible. I have to ask her. But mm -hmm. uh, she's an amazing writer, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's a Buddhist also. So I think she had she had many years to prepare uh, for the uh, writings. So did she mm. go through any process to, to, make, to make this book? That I don't know. I have to, yes. I will ask her for you. <laughs> uh, I hope so one day. I have collectors here. Um, my next exhibition will be in Tokyo in November. Yes, November 7th, yes. But I would love to have an exhibition in London. I never had before, so. But I have I have wonderful collectors here, so it makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for coming.